Hi, I'm Mike Stent, and this is a BAM Credit Insights video. I'm here with Les Richmond, BAM's Vice President and Pension Actuary. Les is the author of the recent Bond Buyer column, Why Analysts Need to Watch the Pension Pendulum. Uh, Les, thank you for taking some time today. My pleasure. And thank you for writing a headline that's a tongue twister. <laughs> um, so, Les, I wanted to talk a little bit. You know, we we know from talking to you over the years that um, pensions are always impacted by the broader economic environment, and in this year's economic environment is probably more uncertain than others. Right? You know, we've talked a lot in our in our weekly uh, videos about the uncertainty about when the Federal Reserve is going to pivot, maybe start cutting rates. There's uncertainty about um, market returns. Uh, one of the things you did was talk about how different types of risks might move independently and how they might impact. Uh, pensions in different ways and different types of issuers. So I'd like you to maybe unpack the column and take us through the risks one by one. Um, one of the things you started by talking about was the tightness in the labor market. And you know it's important to remember that pensions are part of compensation. They're really uh, uh, intimately tied into uh, labor policies and how governments operate. So why don't you talk about that? How does that impact pension risks? Well, uh, let's take a step back first then. Uh, when, uh, when we're assessing pension risk, generally if events or employer actions uh, act to raise pension liabilities, then typically that would raise pension risks. So in a tight labor market, uh, issues of attraction and retention of employees come into play. Uh, I actually was just on the subway this co last couple of weeks. I saw ads for teachers from another state, you know, or recruitment of police officers for another city. So it's out there, uh, uh, re attraction retention issues. So uh, a way that employers uh, sometimes will act to counteract those issues is with money, okay? And that's your compensation and benefits. So if you're talking about compensation, if they are raising their salary scale within, uh, within their scheme or uh, in attracting new recruits, uh, that's, well, salary plays into the pension calculation. So that could raise pensions higher than what the actuary is expecting and raise unfunded liabilities and increase pension risk. Um, another thing that employers will do is improve benefits. So that's the compensation benefits, the improvement of benefits. Well, if benefits Im are improved in some way, increasing health benefits, uh, putting employees back into a, a more generous pension tier, that would increase liabilities as well, so increase pension risk. So one side is the direct compensation. That kind of is a, is a backdoor to increasing pension costs. The other is just directly increasing the pension benefit itself. Correct. Now, before we go on to the other risks, maybe we should take a step back. You know, How does the pension cost increases translate to risk for municipal bond investors? What's the, what's the nexus there? Well, remember, BAM has an irrevocable commitment to step in and pay debt service in the, in the event that the issuer can't. And so we look at all different types of risks that could possibly impair uh, an issuer's ability to pay their debts. And we're looking, of course, over a very long-term uh, time frame there. But it, uh, so pension risk is the risk that pension and OPEB costs, other post-employment benefits costs, could rise to such a degree that they could impair an issuer's ability to pay their debts. And crowding out other kind of Crowding services, out right? the, uh, those uh, ability to the, make those payments. Okay, so back into the column. Uh, one of your other points was the potential for budget deficits. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of headlines. The uh, state of California, most notably, uh, is projecting a large budget deficit for their next fiscal year as federal money is uh, winding down and people are, are emerging from the pandemic. I think uh, it's obvious why budget deficits uh, is a concern for investors, but why is it a pension issue specifically? Well, as we saw after the Great Recession 2008 and 2009, uh, one of the things that, that happened was uh, in an effort to balance budgets, close budget deficits, um, issuers actually cut back on their pension contributions. Of course, that doesn't mean that the liabilities for those benefits goes away. So, you know, if you don't make the contributions now, uh, it just defers them to the future and increases uh, budgetary um, uh, stresses, you know, in future years. And so that's something that, that you're going to be watching closely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and, and we'll get in a little bit in a minute, just like what your methodology is, but I, I want to keep going through the risks first. Okay. So inflation is probably the biggest uncertainty in the economy broadly um, and how that's going to impact municipal budgets. Again, how is that going to uh, potentially impact pensions? Inflation comes into play in a number of ways uh, with regard to, uh, you know, pension liabilities, but two kind of main ways are uh, in, in a, a period of higher inflation, you could have higher wage increases, which again would go into the pension calculations and you know be higher than what the actuary is expecting, so raise liabilities there. Uh, the other way is a lot of um, uh, public sector pension funds 
grant cost of living adjustments to retirees. And you know the actuary makes assumptions about what those cost of living adjustments are going to be. And in a period of higher inflation, uh, most of those COLAs are pegged to inflation in some way. So uh, those could come in higher than what the actuary is expecting as well, again, increasing liabilities and pension risk. I think it's really interesting where you talk about how inflation might be different than the actuarial assumptions. It's kind of a right. throwback to earlier this decade where uh, investment returns were differing from actuarial assumptions, and there was a kind of widening gap in a lot of pension systems. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things we saw over the last couple of years is that a lot of systems restated their expectations for investment returns, kind of made them more realistic, um, or at least more more uh, t closely tied to recent history. Um, but you may see that that divergence reemerging in other ways through through inflation. So something to definitely keep an eye on. Um, so and, and the last point is kind of that most traditional risk, uh, the investment risk, and, and obviously pensions are large pools of capital that are deployed in the marketplace. Uh, issuers are, uh, and their actuaries are counting on them to earn a rate of return, and um, they may or may not be the, they may or may not get the return they're expecting. Um, let's talk about how um, this market may uh, may impact that risk, and specifically, you were talking about the, the choices and how uh, pensions are deploying their capital. Right. Well, there has been a multi-decade trend towards what BAM would consider to be riskier investments to generate returns to offset the need for higher budgetary contributions, okay? So uh, so the news is not all bad, uh, you know, and in, in, we talk about this in the article where there's a, a school of thought right now where uh, it might be time to get back into fixed income investments. Uh, interest rates are relatively high right now, um, and some um, you know, and with the, with the idea that they may be coming down uh, in the in the near term or moderate term, and so uh, the idea is that it could be that we could see a shift into fixed income, less risky investments, which would be a good thing for pension funds. So one of the things you do here is you do your own analysis of pretty much every pension fund that, that's guaranteeing uh, benefits to employees of the issuers that BAM insures. So how many are you looking at now on a, on a given year? How many? Oh, gosh. I, I probably do between uh, primary deals, secondary deals, and, and uh, surveillance activities. I probably do about a couple of thousand a year. Wow. And, and so some of them are very well funded from an actuarial basis. Some yes. of them are, are less so. Um, can you talk us like how these different risks might impact those funds? differently. So, you know, some of these risks are more of an issue for well-funded funds. Some of them are more of an issue for, for less well-funded funds. Well, you know, a lot of the survey data that you see out there is all based on averages. Um, and But within a certain risk, you could have, you know, you could have a, a wide range of outcomes. Uh, and they all would factor into the average, but they could be very different than the average. And so uh, it's really important to look at these risks individually by, uh, by plan sponsor, by issuer, and, and see how they affect them. So that's what I do for BAM. And you know, we want to just take a step back and kind of talk about some some get get a little more longer term perspective again. So, how did you end up in this market? Yeah, you know, so you joined BAM back in 2013, I think. So it's a little over a decade. Why did BAM make pension and OPEB analysis a priority? We weren't, uh, well, thinking back to that time, uh, uh, BAM was founded in 2012. Um, uh, wasn't that far removed from the Great Recession where there were a lot of pension problems, a lot of what I was talking about where uh, employers were uh, cutting back on their pension contributions and deferring risk into the future. And, you know, of course, we have this long-term commitment and it's not revocable. So uh, our founders, you know, Sean McCarthy, Bob Cochran, our Chief Credit Officer Suzanne Finnegan, they all thought, you know, we really should be taking a close look at, uh, at this risk. And so they took the step of hiring uh, an actuary, which is what I was for over 30 years before coming to BAM. Uh, I'm still an actuary, but a consulting actuary is what I was. And um, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, looking at these risks for BAM. It's, it's, uh, it's looking, using my skills in kind of a different way. I, I really am, it's been a great ride. And so you, you kind of hinted at this, but how has your work changed over over that decade? So when you when you started, you you mentioned there was a lot of discrepancies in, in uh, actuarial assumptions across issuers. You spent a lot of time, as I recall, you know, normalizing those assumptions, trying to to bring them back. What's different today, and and what are what are the big issues you face today? Uh, well, over time, I've done a lot of fine tuning to our original methodology. It's still the same methodology. We're going for comparability uh, across issuers uh, within you know within sectors, uh, credit sectors. Um, uh, but, you know, as time has passed, you know, I've, I've, I've learned a lot of the nuances of different pension funds and, ha and I've had to uh, take steps to, 
to take them into account and still try to maintain that comparability that we're going for. So, um, so it's been a lot of fine tuning with the same basic principle, uh, which is comparability, conservatism. Uh, our, our methodology is basically a stress scenario uh, that, that says, well, you know, if, if an issuer can afford these costs now, they should be able to afford actual costs over the long term, which is the t our time horizon for looking at these, at these risks. And you also have al uh, always included OPEB calculations. You're probably ahead of the curve on that a little bit. I am glad to say yes. We already ha we always have. Um, uh, there's a thought in the in the world that OPEB is not as hard of a liability. Uh, we don't make that assumption. We assume that it's just as hard of a liability as as uh, pensions, uh, until something comes along that changes that. Uh, we include OPEB and pension together. And actually, when we construct our metrics, we construct it with uh, in including debt as well, because these are all fixed costs. So our, our metrics are very conservative and give us kind of a clear picture on a stress basis of what the risks are uh, to the issuer. Great. Well, thank you for taking some time, Les. Um, a really uh, great opportunity to share your insights with our audience. Um, you're also, uh, and you serve the industry, serving that as you're on the uh, uh, GFOA's committee on uh, retiree benefits as well. So we appreciate all of your uh, your willingness to uh, to share that experience uh, across the market. And if there are any questions, uh, please reach out to us at creditinsights at buildamerica.com via email. We'd be happy to address them and get back to you. Thanks for watching.